Good morning, pleasant parishioners and partners of PG, Facebook friends. We're thankful that you tuned in to our virtual front door of the church. Uh, we pray that something is said on this morning that would uh, enrich your lives, and I pray that someone hears a word from God so that they can know what they must do to be saved. Tune in, and God bless you. This next song says I'm sold out. My mind is made up. It says there's no room, no vacancies. I'm all filled up. It says his spirit lives in me, and that's the reason I'm sold out. We just need a few sold out people for Jesus this morning to stand with us. If you're fully persuaded, if you're fully committed, if you're 100% willing, we need you to jam with us. We need you to stand with us. We need you to clap with us. It's praise and worship time, a time for us to come together and give God thanks on one accord. This isn't a concert. It's a time for us to give thanks together. The song says, I'm sold out. We just need a few sold out people to lift that with us. Oh, I'm sold out. It says, my mind is made up. You know that you can say it, I'm sold out. My mind is made up. We can say that together. I'm sold out. I am sold out. My mind is made up. We just need a few of you all to lift that. I'm sold out. My mind, my mind is made up. And we're going to the verse. It says, Who can separate us from the love of Jesus? It says, Not death, nor life. It says Jesus paid the price. Now I'm free from sin. I'm sold out. My mind is made up. We can say that together. I'm sold out. My mind, my mind, my mind is. Let's do that verse again. It says, Who can separate us from the love of Jesus? How many know death can't do it? How many know life can't do it? It says Jesus paid the price. Now I'm free from sin. Say I'm sold out. My mind, my mind is made up. Let's lift that all over the room. I'm sold out. My mind is. Now the second verse says I'll come through the fire. I've come through the rain. It says, but God, he's never left my side. It says he's my comfort through all hurt and pain. I'm sold out. My mind, my mind is made up. Yes, it is. Let's do that together. I'm sold out. My mind, my mind, my mind is made Let's do that verse one more time. It says, I've come through the fire. I've come through the, I've come fire. Through the rain. I've come through the rain. But God, but God, if he's never left you, say he's my comfort through all hurt and pain. I'm sold out. Let's stay right there. I'm sold out. If we've got some sold out folk, I'm sold out. I'm sold I'm sold We're gonna take it up. I'm so down. Say. If you're doing it all over the room, I'm so down. Yes, I am. We need a few more of you all to lift that. I'm so down. I'm so down. Yeah. We're going to my favorite part. It says, My heart is fixed. My mind. No room, no vacancy. I'm all filled up. His spirit lives. His spirit lives. Yeah, that's the reason. I'm so say yeah. My heart is fixed. My mind. No room, no vacancy. I'm all filled up. His spirit lives. Yeah, that's the reason. I'm so.
my mind's made up. Let's say, my heart is fixed. My mind's made up. Got a fixed up heart. And my mind's made up. Got a fixed up heart. And a made up mind. I'm fully persuaded. I'm fully committed. My heart is fixed. My mind's made up. Has your heart been fixed? Is your mind made up? Has your heart been fixed? Is your mind made up? My heart is fixed. My mind made up. Yeah, my heart is fixed. And my mind made up. My heart is fixed. My mind's made up. No room, no vacancy. I'm all filled up. There ain't no room. There ain't no room. Yeah, there ain't no room. There ain't no room. No room, no vacancy. I'm all filled up. No room, no vacancy. I'm all filled up. His spirit lives. Yeah, that's the reason. I'm so down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to pause for a moment of prayer. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your presence and we thank you for your power. And God, we thank you for uh, what you're doing behind the scenes. God, we pray that you continue to embrace those who are essential workers. God, we pray that uh, that you embrace them and that you keep them from the disease. And God, we pray that something is said during this virtual service uh, that will lead people to you. In Jesus' name, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. May we all say amen. Brothers and sisters, I'm glad to be back before you, although we are not in our beautiful sanctuary with hanging chandeliers and cushioned pews, uh, but I am just persuaded that God still speaks and God still lives. So therefore, we just want to share with you just a few words of inspiration, a few words of encouragement. Uh, we know that it is Palm Sunday. It is Palm Sunday, even though we are in quarantine, it is still Palm Sunday. Amen. So therefore, we want you to go uh, to uh, the book of John. We'll go to the book of John. The book of John will read uh, in the 12th chapter and we'll also read the 12th verse. Amen. We'll read the 12th chapter uh, and the 12th verse. I know you are in the privacy of of your own praying ground and the solace of your own sacred space. But I, I would still ask you and challenge you that if uh, you would, please stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. If we can stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and if we could stand uh, when your favorite basketball or football team scores, uh, I just believe that we can stand for the word of God. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. So we are looking at the 12th verse of the 12th chapter. It reads thusly. It says, the next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him shouting, Rescue me, rescue me. And in the native tongue, it says, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. So I just want to use uh, as a theme uh, or framework uh, as we share together today, uh, God, we need you to rescue us, rescue, rescue us, rescue us. Brothers and sisters, it is clear to see that in our time, uh, in our space today, uh, that we are in need of some emergency rescue. 
And brothers and sisters, we need God to do something and we need God to do something quickly. And my brothers and sisters, as we peruse the perimeters of this particular pericope, we see that people in this text, they're saying and singing a strikingly similar song. For they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. In all four Gospels, they solidify this particular account because it can be found in Matthew 21, 1 through 11. It can be discovered in Mark 11, 1 through 11. We stumble upon it yet again in Luke, the 19th chapter, 28 through 40. And here again, there is an encore with this experience that emerges in our text for this morning in John 12 and 12. It just seems to me that God wanted us to glean something from this individual event. Brothers and sisters, don't take this lightly, lightly because God is wanting you to glean something from what we're experiencing during this time. It just seems like that God was strategic enough to call to focus the minds of four different gospel writers to point us to one distinct gospel episode. And this episode, this gospel episode, is the precision of the Prince of Peace. Now, I mean, John, which is not even a part of the synoptic gospels, recognizes the importance of the events that transpired as Jesus entered Jerusalem. Use your divine mind's eye of imagination as we pass through the crowds and get a good glimpse of uh, the good shepherd. But as we notice, once again, they appear at his impending death. Brothers and sisters, what I'm sharing with you is, first of all, the Gentiles, they showed up at his birth. And now again, they are showing up at his impending death. And brothers and sisters, the text shares with us that at Jesus' birth, the Gentiles came from the east, and once again, they appear again at his impending death. The question arises for me is that why does John mention them at this point? Because the king has already been rejected by Israel. The Jews had said, we want to see a sign. If you remember that in Matthew 12, and 38, they wanted to see a sign, but the Gentiles just wanted to see Jesus. The Jews wanted to see G what Jesus had done, but the Gentiles just wanted to see Jesus. And we want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. My brothers and sisters, might I suggest to you that not only we not only allow this Palm Sunday to be a ceremony, to operate as a service, but we want it to become an opportunity for somebody to see Jesus. We don't just want this to be another uh, pump and circumstance. We don't just want this to be another opportunity for us to put on our Sunday's best but brothers and sisters, pleasant parishioners, friends of PG, what I suggest to you is that we want somebody to see Jesus. We want someone to see Jesus. It would be a blessing that if more of us saw logging in into church as an opportunity to be transformed by Jesus. We look back into the text, we see Philip. Philip had a Greek name, so his visitors, uh, wanting to see Jesus, they had to come to him. And he took the matter to Andrew, and who also has a Greek name. What's interesting and inspiring to me is that 
uh, about Andrew is that whenever you see Andrew in John's gospel, he is bringing someone to see Jesus. I'm about to shout in this living room by myself. Brothers and sisters, when I see Andrew, he is always bringing someone to see Jesus. Every time you see him in John, he's always bringing someone to see Jesus. If you don't believe me, we can look at him in the first chapter, the 40th through the 42nd verse, he reaches out to the sphere that he can control on his own. He reaches out to his own brother uh, and he tells his brother about Jesus. Y'all, let's look at the sixth chapter, the eighth through the ninth verse. You see where he's bringing folks to Jesus where there were five loaves of bread and three fish. He's bringing folks to Jesus. You all remember in the 12th chapter, the 22nd verse, the Greeks were searching for Jesus, but that's all right. He brought them to the Lord. What an example of a soul winner. And I just wonder what commentary would be discussed when it comes to pleasant parishioners. What commentary would the writer discuss about our posts? What commentary would the writer would discuss about our tweets, about our texts, about uh, our messages, about how we treat folks that are coming into the house of God? How would the commentary or the commentator uh, talk about our comments and our conversations? What would the author write about the pleasant parishioners of Pleasant Green. Are we in the church bringing people to Jesus Christ or are we bringing Jesus Christ a bad name? What is being said about us? Are we bringing people into the presence of God or are we turning people away because of our bad attitude. What are we doing as pleasant parishioners to bring people into the presence of Jesus Christ? Well, as we peer back into the pericope, the people screamed out Hosanna. For the benefit of those who uh, do not know the sounding significance of this syntax, the word Hosanna derived from the Hebrew language, which means save us in Greek. It means rescue us. Therefore, the crowd gathered around the Savior, spreading out palm leaves to them. But oh, my brothers and sisters, the funny thing about this text is that while they ask the Savior to rescue them, the text indicated that they really didn't want the Lord to change their situations. And I just share with you, uh, if you scream Hosanna, if you ask the Lord to come into your situation, brothers and sisters, you ought to be sincere and serious enough that you desire that the Lord change your situation. You ought not just call upon the Lord because it sounds good, but you ought to call upon the Lord because you truly and you earnestly desire that God will change your situation. Let me scale back because I'm getting happy by myself. Brothers and sisters, you ought to ask God to come in your life because you truly want God, Jesus Christ, to be the Lord of your life. We want to move on because I know I don't have much time to keep your attention as you got the food burning, the chicken cooking, and whatever you have going. Many of you have children running around just as I do, and I got to keep them locked up until this video is over. So let me get finished with the text. The text also highlights the precariousness of people. The particular characteristic about the church today is that we will ask God to send us help 
We will ask God to rescue us out of our sad and sorry situations, but when it is not the way that we anticipate, we reject the rescue. Brothers and sisters, I want to suggest to you, brothers and sisters, don't reject God's rescue because sometimes God will deliver you in an unscrupulous manner. It's amazing that these people wanted to be saved but they wanted to tell God how to save them. Sometimes that's how it is in life. We present our problems to the problem solver, but then we want to tell him how to solve our problems. We won't, uh, we, we can be funny sometimes because uh, they, they welcome what they thought they wanted and then they rejected what they really needed. I want to say that again. Brothers and sisters, they welcomed what they thought they wanted, but they rejected what they really needed. And I can only imagine trying to manage and minister to people who shout for rescue but when it is not how they want it, they reject it. When they want it the way they want it, the way they want it, how they want it, the day they want it, they, brothers and sisters, if it is not how they want it, they reject it. Jesus came as a spiritual deliverer on a lowly donkey, and not as a conquering king on a prancing horse. They want it to be delivered how they want it to be delivered. And if brothers and sisters, we have to also understand uh, that God has the power and preeminence. He has the omnipotence in the person of Jesus Christ. Therefore, the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, they bore witness and brothers and sisters, uh, we know that uh, I understand that this is perhaps not uh, what we're used to. But I share with you this, that God is a God who's able to deliver you from whatever circumstance you face. Whatever you are a part of, God is able to deliver you. So we want to just pause for just a moment just to open up the door of the church the door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. I'm inviting you to be a part uh, or to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Uh, wherever you are, uh, wherever you are from, uh, we are as Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. We're inviting you to uh, the body of Christ. We're inviting you to the body of Christ. The way you do that, you can contact us. Uh, by email, uh, by phone number. Uh, we share this email with you, aletcher62 at hotmail.com. You are able to uh, reach out to me if you don't have a church home. If you would like a church home, uh, Pleasant Green would be more than happy to do that for you. We'd be more than happy to do that for you. Brothers and sisters, uh, I pray that the word of God has enriched you today. Also, we want you to understand that no worship service is finished without giving. No worship service is finished or complete without giving. No worship service is uh, complete without giving. Uh, you can express your generosity uh, to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, by sending a, a, a money order or a check to 1220 G.H. Pruitt uh, Place uh, 63113. Or you can also give online at pgmbcstl.org. Uh, you can send uh, your money, you can send your blessing, and you can be uh, generous through those particular sites. Uh, we want to welcome all of those who are guests. We want to welcome those who are guests. If you are a guest uh, logging on, if you just peeking in, we're thankful for you because you could have gone on so many different other sites uh, at this time. And for that, I want to just say that we are a church 
uh, Pleasant Green, who is striving to become pleasantly purposeful for all people. Uh, and I want to share this with you. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Brothers and sisters, uh, we are almost finished with worship at this time, but this is the opportunity for us to share in the Lord's Supper. This is the opportunity to share in the Lord's Supper. Uh, we want you uh, to pause for just a moment and pray. We just want to pause for a moment in prayer. And what we will do is go um, to Scripture. God, we thank you for who you are. And we pray that uh, we are able to engage in this supper uh, worthily. Uh, we are not worthy, but we pray that we engage in it worthily. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for who you are, and we thank you for what you have done. Amen, and thank God. Uh, scripture says in 1 Corinthians, um, the 11th chapter, we see it in 1 Corinthians 11th chapter, uh, right around the 19th verse, uh, Paul was saying it is necessary uh, that there not be any factions among you. And he talks about uh, the Lord's Supper and he talks about that you should eat and drink uh, as those who are worthy. I want to just take just a moment to share this with you, brothers and sisters. Uh, I know that we are in a time where we cannot engage in the Lord's Supper uh, together uh, in community, but I, uh, I I urge you that you get a cracker, you get a wafer, you get a piece of bread, you get some juice uh, so that we can engage in the Lord's Supper together. I want you to know this is not what saves you. We, we're we don't believe in transubstantiation. In other words, we don't believe that taking this bread and drinking this juice is the body of Christ, but it is representative of the body of Christ. Jesus Christ says to us that as often as you do this, uh, you show um, that you remember his suffering uh, for us. So in, uh, in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter talks about uh, the bread as his broken body. And he talks about the juice as his shed blood. So we want to commune together. Bread is his broken body, and the juice is the blood that Jesus shed for us. Let us commune together. Pausing for prayer and benediction. We thank you for God this weekend as we celebrate the latter prophet, Dr. Martin Luther King, as he was assassinated uh, on this weekend. God, we thank you for our first responders. We thank you for those who uh, stand in the gap for us. God, we pray that you keep them, uh, all those who are essential workers. Have mercy upon Pleasant Green. Have mercy upon those who uh, are uh, friends and family. And God, we ask that you keep them close to you. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. May we all say amen. Amen. God bless you.
and we pray that we see you soon.